So it goes without saying that the new Blender releases have been actually incredible. It has brought much needed features that have been in other 3D softwares for ages, like advanced snapping, light groups, and bringing it more in line with industry standard tools, along with pushing the latest possible advancements like viewport compositing or incredibly fast GPU AI denoising. In this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the latest features which I find most interesting from 4.1 and 4.0, in case you've missed it. Because if you're like me, I usually end up sticking with the LTS version for far too long and I miss out on the new features until the new LTS version is released. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are also interested in my favorite tools from an ArcViz perspective, so be sure to keep watching. Not only that, but I'm gonna talk about the new Render Raw add-on from CG Cookie, which utilizes a ton of these new features and it makes an actually insane viewport and rendering tool. But first things first, I've created this scene which is made in Blender 4.1, so it uses a ton of the latest features. This scene is also now uploaded to iMesh for all of our customers to download, pull apart, and generally just play with. Not only that, if you're looking to get this scene along with almost 2,100 more assets for only $89, then you're in luck because we've just started our May sale. This is one of about two sales that we have per year. And if you're looking to get into ArcViz, this is probably the best possible time because you'll be able to instantly get a library of 2,100 assets. You can then start your new ArcViz business and, and generally just get going. If you already have an ArcViz library, then you can immediately bolster it with about 2,000 more assets or you could just get these scenes. There's about five or six scenes on IMS right now, and you can download all these scenes and pull them apart and learn how uh, basically a professional would do them. So this scene is uploaded with all the camera motions and, and everything exactly like you see it here, except for some of the color edits, which were done using the render raw add-on, which I'll get onto a little bit later. I will supply the preset file for those who have the add-on to use, but generally if you download the scene and press render, it's going to be pretty close to the final result anyway, because it does still use all the new features like AGX, for example. Now this is one of my favorite scenes so far, so I hope you like it. It does have a ton of the latest 3D pantry assets that we created. Uh, it should also render on an eight gigabyte GPU. It does use Simplify quite heavily uh, to make the texture sizes smaller so it can render. So if you do have a bigger GPU, you can try increasing the, the texture size so that it does render maybe a slightly more higher quality, but they won't make too much difference compared to the render settings I've already got here anyway. Right, so let's get into some of the new features. And like I said, some of these features are from 4.0 as well, but I do think that a lot of people who are getting into ArcViz now are coming from other industries anyway. So maybe this is the first time you're hearing about this. So for the first tool, this is the new snapping feature and I've worked a lot with 3D Studio Max in the past and it has a really useful snapping tool whereas in Blender it was always a huge pain for me to make the snapping work correctly. Now I'm sure a lot of you have tried to snap in Blender in the past and it just didn't quite work as you expected. Certain things are not snapping in the right places, it's trying to get move the object in weird ways and it's just not quite snapping exactly how you want it to go. So let's look at old Blender. Let's say we have this cabinet and I want to make sure that the door fits exactly to the right edge. In the past, you, you basically have to enable snapping and just hope that it selects the right vertex. And you have to play around with certain modes like closest, center, medium, or active, and just hope that it just works the way you want it to. The amount of times it didn't work was just such a huge pain. But now if we look at the latest Blender version, if we press G to move and then we press B, we now are in like a base snap mode, I think it's called, and we can choose the vertex edge or face that we want, and we can click and we can drag it to where we want it to snap to. And there we go. I've instantly snapped it exactly where I want it to go. This is so easy and so simple to do that I don't think I'm gonna be using the normal snapping really ever. I think every time I wanna snap, I'm just gonna be choosing exactly the vertex I want it to, to snap from and choose where I want it to go. And I think that's just gonna be how it's just gonna work for me from now on. I'm so happy that Blender finally has this feature. Now, one of the most powerful tools inside of Blender is actually the compositor. The fact that you can do most of the desired image edits inside of Blender itself is pretty incredible. However, if you've ever tried to use it, you'll realize how annoyingly slow it is. So over time, Blender has been working to make the compositor work inside the 3D viewport in real time using a GPU. Now the compositor itself still does only work with the CPU and it is still quite slow because not all the nodes have been converted to the GPU yet, but whichever nodes are working with the GPU will now work in real time in the 3D viewport. So to enable this, you simply go to the render view, click on the down arrow, make sure the compositor is enabled either by camera or always. Now let's go to the compositor and we can add something like glare and we can see that the glare is instant. The glare node, if you've ever tried to use it in the past, is so annoyingly slow, but now look how incredibly fast it is. 
We could do this in the viewport, which is just blowing my mind. I'm, I'm so glad that there's finally some uh, reactive and real-time glare that we can play with. It feels like glare and other tools, which I have kind of strayed away from inside of Blender, I can now utilize correctly, finally, as part of my workflow. So now, not only that with the 3D viewport has been improved, but also the open image denoising now works on GPU. So if you've tried between open image denoise and the optics rendering, you'll notice that open AI denoise is uh, more accurate, and I find that it works a lot better. However, that only worked with the CPU in the past. I actually found that it can drastically slow down the viewport rendering speed once it kicks in. I would then have to make sure I set a start sample to something like 30, so it has enough time to get to a good noise level before it kicks in. And this is such an unfortunate pain to use because it feels so good and so accurate and yet had some limitations. Now I can set it immediately with the GPU and it still renders just as quick and holy moly, does it look good. It only needs one or two samples and you instantly get a good idea of how the final render is gonna look. This is blowing my mind. I can't believe how fast it renders and how quickly the denoiser is working and how accurately. I'm getting real time feedback for how my render is gonna look. In the past, to get previews like this, you'd have to render for, for hours. Um, but now it's instant. I, I can't believe this is finally here and we're at this stage. Uh, this is actually insane. Now let's get on to Ajax. Uh, if you've not heard of it, then now is a good time. So if you've used Blender for a while, then maybe you've heard of Filmic. And Filmic has always been praised as an incredible way to get photorealistic renders inside of Blender. And that was true for a very long time, basically until now, now that we have Ajax. So Ajax is a color space that has been introduced to Blender. And it's designed to enhance the realism and color accuracy of renders even further than it was possible with Filmic. And it provides a wider dynamic range and better color fidelity, making it ideal for those who are aiming to achieve a higher level of photorealism in their projects. It works incredibly well with highly dynamic ranged images, which means it can handle really well the bright areas and the dark areas without losing too much information. This is particularly useful in complex scenes with varied lighting. One of the standout features of AGX is, is its ability to replicate real world colors and lighting effects more accurately. This results in images that can appear more vivid and lifelike compared to those rendered with other color spaces. If you have any old projects, then please do open them in the latest version of Blender and make sure to set it to Ajax in the color space. You could choose medium or high contrast or even punchy and see how it looks. And I personally think that there is an immediate improvement in photorealism when we set it to Ajax. Now that we've talked about Ajax and real-time viewport adjustments, this actually brings me on to the next part, which is an incredible add-on by CG Cookie, which adds a node tree inside of the compositor which you can tweak and edit inside the 3D viewport to get the colors, light, and effects that you want. In his video, he explained that doing this inside the compositor allows you to do the edits using the raw color space, then it does the edits, and then it converts it to AGX. This means that you get the best possible dynamic range and colors within the image before it's compressed uh, for other formats like PNG or JPEG. Now, if you follow my tutorials, you'll know that I love the, the camera raw filter inside of Photoshop to finish off my images. This requires me to save the image in either TIFF or EXR from Blender, to save as much color information as possible before editing it in Photoshop and then saving as a JPEG for publishing. This add-on, however, allows me to do all of this inside of Blender. The layout is also very similar to the, to the camera raw filter, which is lovely. And this is all works inside the viewport. I just can't believe how well this works. So when I hit render, it already has the finished product. I can still then save it as a TIFF or EXR and edit further if I wanted to, but this is an incredibly efficient way to get exactly the look I want inside of Blender for quick turnarounds for my customers. This has really blown me away. If anyone gets a chance to purchase this, then I know you won't be disappointed. Now, light linking, which has been requested by 3D artists for many, many years. And now light linking is perfect for those who are looking to control the lighting dynamics from within their scene with more precision. Much like the sophisticated light linking systems found in other major 3D software, Blender's version now allows you to dictate exactly which objects in your scene are affected by specific lights. This is crucial for complex scenes where you need to highlight certain elements without affecting the overall lighting setup. Now using light linking can create more specific lighting setups that would have been cumbersome or downright impossible in previous versions. For example, imagine that you have a scene where you want to make the lampshade glow more brightly without adding a lot more light into the scene. In the past, this would have been basically impossible. Now with light linking, you can achieve this by linking the light only to your chosen target, leaving the rest to be lit only by the ambient light source. You may think that this is physically inaccurate and it is, However, in photography, this has also been done for many, many years. Photographers would add lights and flashes around the scene. They would then take as many photos highlighting areas that they want. Then they can mask out the parts they don't want to receive light in post-production. That is exactly what we're doing here, just in real time. Now the process itself is pretty straightforward. Simply you select the light that you want to link and in the object properties under the visibility panel, specify which collections should be influenced by the light. Now the ability to exclude and include objects dynamically adds an extra level of fine tuning artists can take to push their renders to the next level. 
Now, just to remind you, don't miss this opportunity to get the whole iMesh library plus this scene and all the other scenes for only $89. Now, just to put that into perspective, if you try to buy a scene from other websites, the scenes themselves would cost over $100. So that might give you a perspective of how much value you get here. Now, we release 30 assets every month. So if you stay subscribed, you'll be able to get an additional 360 assets throughout the year, pushing it to almost 2,500 assets for only $89. Now, I think that's it for today. There are a ton more features which I like to talk about such as like groups for example so if you do like this kind of format of video then do let me know and i'll try to get them done for you uh, as soon as possible and if there are any features that you like specifically for me to talk about then i'd love to dive into them in more detail but yeah thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed do check out the other animation video on its own and uh, give that a like and don't forget to subscribe as well it helps me a lot so thank you very much and uh, i'll talk to you guys very very soon